In this video, we will be discussing about the muscles of facial expression. Uh, we will discuss the muscles one by one. We will be discussing the origin insertion of some important muscles and their action. Okay, let us start with the muscle. So, uh, while discussing the muscles of facial expression, we can topographically divide these muscles into muscles which are present around different regions. So, there are muscles of facial expression which are present around the eyes, muscles of facial expression which is present around the mouth and in the scalp region around the auricle. So, it is like that. So, first we will be discussing around the muscles of facial expression which is located around the eyelids. So, let us start with the first muscle which is present around the eye that is an important muscle and this muscle is helping us to blink our eyes so which is this muscle which is present around the eyelids so that is an important muscle that is the orbicularis oculi so orbicularis oculi so from the name itself that is oculi which is related to the eye that is orbicularis oculi muscle so this is an important muscle of facial expression which is present around the eye so we will be discussing about the parts of this muscle the origin insertion of the parts of this muscle and the action of this muscle okay so let us start with the parts of this muscle so you just know that this muscle has got uh, three parts so which are the three parts of this muscle so it has got an orbital part that is an orbital part then there is a lacrimal part and a palpebral part so we will discuss it one by one. The original insertion feature of this part is different. So first uh, we look at the orbital part of this muscle. So the orbital part of this muscle is originating from the medial aspect of the medial palpebral ligament. So which is this structure uh, which I have marked in a green mark. So you can see a green mark here at the medial end of the eye here. So this is known as a medial palpebral ligament. So medial palpebral ligament. Okay. So this is the green structure which is drawn here. So first we will discuss about the origin and insertion of the orbital part of the orbicularis oculi muscle. So the orbital part of the orbicularis oculi muscle is originating from the medial aspect of the medial palpebral ligament and the adjacent bone like this. So, it originates like this and it goes around the orbit like this, okay. It goes around the orbit like this and the fibers again return to the point of origin here. So, it originates from the medial aspect of medial palpebral ligament and adjacent bone and it takes around around the orbit and it comes to this, uh, comes and get inserted into the same point where it has originated so concentric fibers originating from the medial aspect of medial palpebral ligament winds around the, goes around the orbit and it returns to the same point to get inserted into that point so these are the concentric fibers which are actually the orbital part of the orbicularis ocule muscle so from which region the orbital part is originating so it is originated from the medial aspect of medial palpebral ligament and adjacent bone and it goes around the orbit and it comes to the same point to get inserted here. So now about the lacrimal part which is uh, not so important. So remember that the lacrimal part is originating from the so it is originating from the lacrimal fascia and the lacrimal uh, bone and this lacrimal part of the orbicularis ocular muscle is present deep to the deep and lateral to the lacrimal sac so that is the uh, lacrimal part of the orbicularis ocular muscle which is originating from the lacrimal fascia and adjacent lacrimal bone and it uh, goes around to the upper and lower eyelids like this so that is the lacrimal part so origin of the lacrimal part is from the lacrimal fascia and lacrimal bone 
and it gets inserted into the upper and lower eyelids so that is important next one is known as the palpebral part so uh, we will uh, draw with this another color to for the sake of understanding only actually it should be drawn with brown color only so the palpebral part of this orbicularis ocular muscle is present in the lids so, so from the name itself we can know that it is present in the lids so like uh, palpebral part is originating fibers are originating from the lateral aspect of the medial palpebral ligament like this so it goes in the eyelids like this so i'll draw with this color okay it goes in the eyelids like this so it is originated from the lateral aspect of the medial palpebral ligament it goes like this so here also the fibers is going like this and the fibers on the lateral aspect it interlace each other forming a lateral palpebral raphe here so the fibers will interlace each other on the lateral aspect forming lateral palpebral raphe okay actually this uh, palpebral part have fibers which doesn't return to the same point of origin so unlike the orbital part it doesn't return to the same point of origin but on the lateral aspect the fibers will interlace each other to form the lateral palpebral raphe so that is the difference between the orbital part and the palpebral part so palpebral part is originating from the lateral aspect of medial palpebral ligament so and laterally these fibers uh, interlace each other forming the lateral palpebral lapid so we have discussed about the origin and insertion of the orbicular ocular muscle so we will think about the action of this muscle so while discussing the action of this muscle we should discuss uh, it by part so for example the orbital part is having an action what is the action of orbital part we know that the orbital part of this muscle takes origin from the medial aspect of the medial papillary ligament and they form concentric circles like this and return to the same point of origin so orbital part is helping in closing the eyelids very tightly tightly so it helps in tight closure of the eyelids actually so that is it is helping in wrinkling also and it protects the eye from bright light protects eye from bright light so these are uh, powerful fibers which helps in closure of the eye tightly and it also helps in wrinkling also and it uh, because of the tight closure of the eyelids these muscle contraction is helping in protecting the eye from the bright light so that is about the action of the orbital part now what is the function of the lacrimal part so the function of the lacrimal part is slightly different it is uh, it is related to the lacrimal sac so it helps in dilation of the lacrimal sac and then helps in the flow of the tears okay and it directs the lacrimal puncture to the lacus lacrimalis and it besides this it also supports the lower eyelids whereas a major action of the lacrimal part of this fibers is the dil dilation of the lacrimal sac as it is present in relation to the lacrimal sac now about the palpebral fibers so what is the function of this palpebral part of the orbicularis ocular muscle it is also helping closure of the eyelids but it helps in gentle closure of the eyelids so that is it is closes it closes the lids gently so it is helping in blinking so anyway orbicularis ocular muscle generally is helping in closure of the eyelids so orbital part helps in tight closure of the eyelids whereas palpebral part helps in gentle closure of the eyelids whereas lacrimal part dilates the lacrimal sac and also supports the lower eyelids so that is about the important muscle of the facial expression that is the orbicularis ocular muscle now we will deal with the other muscles of facial expression now 
so we will discussing the muscle around the eyelids that is the muscles of facial expression around the eyelids we should deal with the small muscle here that is not so important but we have to discuss it while discussing the muscles of facial expression that is a small muscle which is originating from the medial end of the superciliary arch and it get inserted into the skin of the eyebrow like this so it get inserted into the skin of the mid eyebrow like this so on either side you can see this muscle which is originating from the medial end of the superciliary arch and it get inserted into the skin of the mid eyebrow like this so this muscle is known as corrugator supercelli so what is the action of this muscle what is the action of this corrugator supercelli so this muscle the contraction of this muscle will help in creating vertical lines in the forehead like this so you can see the vertical lines in the forehead so this occurs when we are in which expression frowning expression so these muscle uh, the contraction of these muscle will create vertical lines in the forehead so the function is frowning so frowning the this facial expression is associated with the contraction of the corrugator supercelli muscle so that is the uh, small muscle we'll deal with the other muscles so first uh, we'll be discussing about the muscles around the mouth while discussing the muscles around the mouth we'll discuss some of the elevators and depressors of the uh, upper lip and lower lip here so the original insertion of this muscle are not so important while we'll be discussing a few here so first muscle is known as the levator labis superioris elecunasi. So from the name itself it is levator. Levator means it helps in elevation. And levator labi means it helps in elevation of the lip here. So superior is elecunasi. Elecunasi is related to the nose here. So it is related to the lip and it is related to the ala of the nose and it helps in elevation. So the muscle is originating from the nasal process of the maxilla and it gets inserted into the ala of the nose as well as to the upper lip here. So it is uh, at the both time it is getting inserted to the ala of the nose and to the upper lip here. So on both sides you are having this muscle. So from the name itself it helps in elevation of the upper lip. So it helps in which expression, which facial expression it helps, uh, it helps in making which facial expression it is uh, related to making this expression it is sadness. So that is levator labi superioris elecunasi. So and the next muscle which we are going to uh, discuss is levator labi superioris. So levator labi superioris it is also helps in elevation of the upper lip and it is also getting inserted into the upper lip. So this muscle is also helping in making the expression of sadness. So and the next muscle is the levator anguli oris. So this is the levator anguli oris muscle and this muscle get inserted into the ankle of the lips here. So as it is inserted to the ankle that is known as a levator anguli oris. So it is inserted into the ankle of the lips here, ankle of the mouth, sorry. It is inserted into the ankle of the mouth. So as it is inserted into the ankle of the mouth, so remember the name, it is levator. It helps in elevation of the ankle of the mouth and it helps in making which expression? It is also helping in making the expression of sadness. So these are the elevators of the lip here. So that is the levator labi superioris elecunasi, levator ankle oris, levator labi superioris. And there are two other muscles which is originating from the zygomatic bone and get inserted into the upper lip. So these are the zygomatic major and the zygomatic minor muscle. So this one is zygomatic major and you have the zygomatic minor muscle. So zygomatic major And there is a zygomatic minor. This zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor. 
so look at the action of the zygomaticus uh, major muscle it is originating from the zygomatic bone and it get inserted into the uh, angle of the lip like this angle of the mouth like this so when this muscle contracts you will be able to make an expression like this so this expression is that of smiling and laughing so which is a muscle of facial expression that is helping and smiling and laughing so that is the zygomaticus major so remember this action of the muscle which muscle is helping and smiling and laughing that is zygomaticus major so what is the action of zygomaticus minor the zygomaticus minor muscle is helping in making the expression of contempt so major helps in smiling and laughing the minor makes an expression of contempt here so that is about the um, muscles inserted into the upper aspect of the lip now we'll see the depressors of the lip here you know? so depressors of the lips are here so of lips so first one you can see that there is a depressor which get inserted into the angle of the mouth here so this is known as depressor angle oris depressor angle as this is inserted into the angle of the mouth this is known as angle oris so as it is helping in depression it is known as depressor angle oris so this is the depressor angle oris muscle so the when the depressor angle oris muscle contracts it draws the angle of the mouth downwards so when you draw the angle of the mouth downwards it is making which expression it is making an expression of sadness so with this muscle when it contracts it means an expression of sadness so along with this you can see another muscle which is also inserted into the lower lip and helps in its depression so this is known as the depressor labia inferioris muscle so this is known as the depressor labia inferioris muscle so depressor labia inferioris muscle is inserted into the lower lip it helps in depression of the lower lip okay so along with this depressors and elevators of the lips i would like to discuss one more muscle along with this so that muscle is known as the rhizoris muscle so that is the rhizoris muscle so uh, and this is arising from the angle of the mandible like this and it will get in inserted into the skin around the angle of the mouth like this so that is the rhizoris muscle it is present on both sides here, originating from the angle of the mandible and it get inserted into the um, angle of the mouth like this so this muscle is known as the rhizoris muscle so rhizoris muscle so what is the action of this muscle it, it helps in making an expression of grinning so grinning is by the contraction of the rhizoris muscle so we have discussed some small muscles around the mouth so now we will go into the important muscles around the mouth that is the buccinator muscle and also the orbicularis oris muscle so a uh, vaccinator is an important muscle which is present around the cheeks it has got three parts that is upper part middle part and lower part so upper part is emerging from them so which is a bone in this upper part that is a maxilla so if the upper part of this muscle so this is the imagine this to be the mandible okay so this is the maxilla with like this this is the maxilla so the upper fibers are taking origin from the maxilla opposite the opposite the molar teeth so the upper fibers they go straight into the uh, upper lip like this so they go straight into the upper lip like this now the lower fibers are originating from the mandible opposite the molar teeth and they go into the lower lip straight like this so these are the upper fibers emerging from the axilla opposite the molar teeth these are the lower fibers which are originating from the mandible opposite the molar teeth so both the that is upper fibers go straight into the upper lip like this lower fibers go straight into the lower lip like this so now what about the middle fibers middle fibers are taking origin to the pterygo mandibular raphe like this now the middle fibers uh, they what happen they decuss it each other 
so that is they decuss it here like this so they decuss it before reaching the lips so that is all about the vaccinator muscle so vaccinator muscle has got three parts upper middle and lower parts so upper fibers originate from the maxilla, uh, middle from the pterygomandibular tract and the lower from the mandible. So upper get inserted into the upper lip, lower to the lower lip but the middle deposit each other before reaching the lips. So that is about the origin of this muscle. So which expression is it making? So what is the function of this muscle? Which facial expression does it make? So this is a muscle which is helping in whistling. Okay. So which is this expression? You can see the person is whistling. So this muscle help in whistling. So this is the whistling muscle. This is very important. So actually the important function of this uh, vaccinator muscle is that it flattens the cheek against the gums and the teeth. And this it prevents the accumulation of food in the vestibule. And regarding the facial expression it makes, it is the whistling muscle. So we'll discuss about the orbicularis oris muscle next. So this is uh, orbicularis oris muscle. This is an important muscle which is present around the mouth. So while discussing the orbicularis oris muscle, this muscle consists of two parts. That is, it consists of an intrinsic part and extrinsic part. So intrinsic part means these are the intrinsic uh, fibers of the muscles. Extrinsic part means these are the fibers of this muscle which are derived from the other muscles around the mouth. So the intrinsic part, we will see the origin and the insertion of the intrinsic part. The intrinsic part, um, this uh, originate uh, from the superior incisus of the maxilla like this. So it originates from the superior incisus of the maxilla and it gets inserted into the angle of the mouth. So in the lower part it originates from the inferior incisus of the mandible and it gets inserted into the angle of the mouth. So these are actually the intrinsic part of this muscle. So intrinsic part of this muscle originates from the superior incisus of the maxilla and the inferior incisus of the mandible and these fibers get inserted into the angle of the mouth. Now we will see the extrinsic part. The extrinsic part means this extrinsic part of the muscle is derived from the muscle, uh, other muscles which are present in this region. So extrinsic part is further divided into a middle stratum and a superficial stratum. So the middle stratum of the extrinsic part is derived from the vaccinator muscle. Now we know that the vaccinator muscle has got a middle part which is originating from the pterygomandibular raphe. Now we also know that the uh, middle fibers of the vaccinator muscle before reaching the lips if they decuss it that is uh, like uh, sorry it goes like this. So the lower fibers goes upwards, upper fibers goes downwards like this. So they deposit each other and they reaches, uh, they reach the lip like this. So this muscle, which are the depositing fibers of the vaccinator muscle also contribute to the formation of orbicularis oris muscle. It contributes to the formation of middle stratum of the orbicularis oris muscle like this. On both sides you have vaccinator. So, it contributes to the formation of the orbicularis oris muscle like this by the decussating fibers like this. So, it contributes to the formation both sides. So, vaccinator muscle is contributing to the formation of middle stratum of the orbicularis oris muscle. Now, we will discuss the superficial stratum. So, we know that the superficial stratum of the orbicularis oris muscle is derived from the uh, elevators and depressors of the lip. We have discussed about the elevators and depressors of the uh, lip here, of the mouth here. So we know that there are some elevators and depressors of the mouth here. So these muscles also contribute to the formation of extrinsic part of this orbicularis ori. These are actually the superficial strata. So orbicularis or oris muscle, sorry it is orbicularis oris not ocule. Orbicularis oris muscle consists of an intrinsic uh, fibers derived from the superior and inferior incisivus. 
It consists of an extrinsic part. Extrinsic part is further divided into middle stratum and the superficial stratum. Middle stratum is derived from the middle fibers of vaccinator muscle which deposit each other to reach the lips. And the superficial stratum is derived from the muscles which are elevators and depressors of the mouth here. So that is all about the original insertion of the orbicularis oris muscle. What is the action of this orbicularis oris muscle? So these muscle which is present around the mouth, it helps in closing the mouth and it purses the mouth. So which expression? It purses the mouth. So for better understanding, look at this picture. We can see which expression is that it is pursing of the mouth. So which is the muscle helping pursing of the mouth? Or orbicularis or this muscle purses the mouth and it helps in closure of the mouth. So that is the important muscle around the mouth. And we'll discuss some important other muscles here. So now I'll discuss about an important superficial muscle which is present around the neck. So that is nothing but the platysma muscle. So this muscle is originating from the upper parts of the pectoral and deltoid fascia and it goes upwards and medially and it, anterior fibers are getting inserted into the base of the mandible and the posterior fibers are inserted into the skin of the lower lip, lower face and the lip. So and it is continuous with the rhizoris muscle. So when this platysma muscle is contracted it makes an expression of horror terror and fight you can see from the picture here this facial expression is that of horror terror and fight so platysma is important and we'll discuss the other muscle so these are the uh, some other important muscles here we know we have discussed in previous videos about the frontalis muscle its origin and insertion it is superficially inserted into the skin uh, overlying the upper eyelid here. So what is the uh, expression this muscle, contraction of this muscle makes? So, so it is helping an expression, making an expression of surprise here. So you can see the action of this muscle, the frontalis muscle, it is making an expression of this. So you can see the wrinkles here, that is horizontal wrinkles, it draws the eyebrows like this it draws the eyebrows upwards and it makes horizontal wrinkles so this expression is that of a surprise okay so this has an expression of surprise by drawing the eyebrows upwards like this so what is the procerous muscle this procerous muscle is a small pyramidal muscle this is alternating from the some parts of the knees of bone and get inserted and merges with the frontalis muscle here so this procerous muscle along with the corrugator supercelli muscle is helping in making an expression of uh, frowning. So this muscle also helps in frowning. So along with the corrugator supercelli muscle, procerous muscle is also helping, uh, helping in making an expression of frowning. So that is the function of mentalis muscle. The mentalis muscle contract to produce an expression of doubt so doubt expression is what mentalis makes now we'll discuss some small muscle which are present around the nose so this muscle which is present around the nose that is known as the compressor nasi compressor nasi sorry compressor nervous it is compressor nervous and there is also other muscle that is known as the dilator nervous and there is a depressor septae here depressor septae here so these are the muscles which are present around the nose and procerus is also present around the nose we have discussed is late earlier so this is the uh, these are the other three muscles so these two muscles help in making an expression of okay anchor so these three two muscles helping in making an expression of anger here so these are some of the muscles which are present around the nose and uh, for the completion we'll discuss uh, some muscles around the auricle so around the auricle which is related anteriorly is the auricularis anterior which is related superiorly is the auricularis superior and there is auricularis posterior so these are the uh, muscles which are present around the auricle so far we have discussed the muscles of facial expression 
uh, according to their location which is present around the mouth which is present around the eyes and which is present in the scalp region around the auricles around the nose so around this the important ones are the occipitofrontalis the orbicularis oris the orbicularis oculi the platysma the vaccinator muscle the rhizoris muscle so elevators and depressors of the mouth and the mentalis muscle so all these are important uh, so the original insertion of some muscles need to be studied so that is all about the muscles of facial expression thank you for watching this video do share the videos do like the videos and if you like the channel please subscribe the channel for more videos and press on the bell icon to get instant notifications from the channel thank you